Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Today, as you know, is Stout Brew Day. I've just added the calcium chloride and calcium sulfate to the mash tun. We've already got the grain in here that we put in yesterday. So all that remains for me to do now is to add the strike water. So we've got 500 litres of water over here in the HLT. Not quite enough, but uh, we'll fill that up once we've taken some out and put it back on to heat again. We're striking at 80 degrees this morning, but we're only looking for a mash temperature of 66, I think. Yeah, going from memory, I weren't far off. 66.5 for this one, and we're gonna mash for 60 minutes. We want to achieve our mash temperature as well, our target temp of 66.5 degrees C, within the first 50 minutes of mixing. Uh, because that's when most of the conversion takes place and of course we'll do a pH test to make sure that we're smack bang on 5.2 well 5.2 to 5.4 is a good spot for me uh, so let's get on with the mash the mash tun connected up while we're waiting for the mash tun to fill up we're going to rinse the caustic out of the boil kettle and run a little bit of paracetic acid through the plate chiller so that it's clean and sanitized ready for uh, putting the wort in there of course we've had caustic running in the boil kettle this morning when the HLT came on and we need to get all that caustic rinsed out before we put the acid in because obviously the caustic is an alkali based solution and the acid is an acid so I've got the cold water hooked up to the plate chiller and we're rinsing everything through including the hose pipe and the spray ball you can see there that the spray ball is rotating literally at a tenth of the speed that it would do normally under the pump pressure so at the moment we're just using the mains pressure which is pretty uh, pretty low but once we've got this pump kicking all of the solutions around that spray ball well you wouldn't want to be in there with it let's put it this way so we've got the water coming in at the bottom of the plate chiller this is called back flushing and we're back flushing out the top here and that is the pipe that runs us to the spray ball we'll close that off we'll clean this uh, whirlpool arm so now the water's got to come through the plate chiller up through the whirlpool arm and if we scoop back around again you'll be able to see inside there it is coming out of the whirlpool arm just there again very very low pressure in comparison to what we normally have from the pump now that we're happy that the whirlpool arm has been cleaned out we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean the pump out so there are two ways that we can clean the pump out. This way we're gonna back flush through this pipe and open the pump housing there. And also there's this section here. So this section bypasses the plate chiller. We wanna go through the plate chiller, flush out the pump housing. Across here, I've already flushed this pipe out. Then it's running down into the base and then down and across here into the drain and away. So we've flushed that pipe work out. I've already, like I say, I've already flushed this pipe work through to flush that pipe there before I pick the camera up. So just a couple more sections to do. Then what I will do is remove the pump filter. We'll give that a clean under the tap, make sure there's no particles stuck in there. Then we'll put about 20 liters of water in the tank, turn the whole system on, let the pump recirculate it all, then we'll drain, and then we'll fill up with acid. And just to give you a comparison of what it looks like with the pump on, coming out of that um, whirlpool arm, 
So check that little beauty out. Like a jet wash. I won't show you what it looks like with the spray ball on because I will get drenched. Right, we've got the uh, spray ball on in there, you can hear that. And the mash tun's just about filled up, so we're ready to get mixing in for the stout mash, the monster mash. Look at all these beautiful grains all still separated on the surface. Right, let's get this moving. They're all floating, you see. So we need to now start to push them under. There's quite a little bit of water to go yet, still. Circulating caustic in the fermenter for us, and the alarm is telling us that it's had a 45 minute mash, and it's time now to perform a valve. So we reset the alarm to give us another 15 minutes, and we're going to hook up the pipe work to perform a ball off to our mash tun recirculation pump which just happens to live on our plate chiller assembly just down oh. so all I have to do is attach the hoses if you're a regular to the channel you'll have seen a dozen times before that's it Make sure I've got that tap turned off, otherwise I'm going to get covered in hot water. Right then. So we opened the outlet at the bottom of the HL, uh, the mash tun to get the liquor flowing into the pump. I'll bring it a little bit. So we've got liquor flowing into the mash pump, uh, but before we turn the mash pump on, we're going to remove the sparge arms because you usually get a little bit of grain husk come through in the first initial uh, recirculation. There we go. So I'll go and turn it on. And there we have the mash pump on. You should be able to see that in there. And uh, we'll just throttle that down a little bit because we don't want to go too fast and settle the grain bed too tight otherwise we'll end up with a stuck sparge and with that much flake barley and oat malt and what have you in there it's there's a real chance of that happening frankly so we're going to give this 15 minutes just recirculating like that at some point within those 15 minutes when I'm happy that there's no grain coming through I pop these little beauties back on and we'll end up with the recirculating sparge arm but you don't really don't need this if you don't have it and then uh, 
The mash tun's had its acid treatment, it's empty, I've taken the acid out, the acid's over there waiting to go into the fermenter because we recycle that acid and clean the fermenter with it as well or sanitise the fermenter. So 15 minutes time we're going to move the sweet wort, beautiful, beautiful sweet wort for the stout across into the boil kettle and uh, perform the sparge of course. It's as simple as that folks. Time has come to transfer. The time has come to transfer the beer across to the boil kettle. Very simple, really. So we want to stop the ball off by turning that off there, and we're going to remove this top pipe, and we're going to transfer that across to the boil kettle fill pipe, which is here. We'll open that fully. Open the pump fully. And then we'll throttle it with this pipe here, because there's a little bit more control on this one. I think about there is good. And then we're going to attach the HLT to the rotating spray arm and open the HLT valve. There we go, so now we've got water coming into the top of the mash instead of recirculating the beer and of course the beer as you can hear is trickling into the boil kettle so we'll try and control the speed that the water's coming into the mash you know the score we want to try and maintain about an inch of water above the grain bed and up on the boil kettle you can see we of course have the sweet work coming across and then I know I'm going to get a thousand comments people saying aren't you worried about hot side aeration well I'm yet to notice it in any of my beers and all the kits that I've had including the 10 barrel kit at Idle Valley and this one we all filled from the top like that and never seem to have a problem so maybe I'm just lucky, maybe it doesn't exist, uh, I don't know, but uh, certainly not something that worries me. That's the mash tun dug out, we've got all the grain just there. It's all cleaned and put to bed for the next batch of beers that we do. So what we're going to do now is weigh out the hops for the bittering edition. We're about to hit the hop break as well, so I'm going to do this pretty quickly. So here we have the scales and a big jug because we've got 880 grams of Challenger going into this batch today. So let's open this Challenger from this side now. The bag's getting a little bit smaller because after every time we take some hops out, we obviously seal her back up. I got this sealer off eBay, 400 mil wide. It was actually less than 20 quid. Absolute bargain. It's not a back sealer though. So, six, seven, eight hundred, and eighty grams of absolutely lovely English Challenger hops. I can hear all sorts of hissing noises coming from the boil kettle now, so I'm gonna go and keep an eye on the temperature. We'll get through the hot break and then we'll put these hops in. Yes, so we are indeed boiling now, and with the stout, it really can be quite a vigorous boil, and uh, we're trying to pinch a bit of headspace to get a full batch out of it. 
So you have to be really careful and watch this boil all the time. Or I use something called anti-foam FD2OP. This stuff is available from Murphy's, it's really quite expensive. Uh, lots of brewers use this in the fermenter to keep the foam down there. I use it in the boil to prevent foam in the boil kettle and allow me to get a little bit more of a batch. So literally for a 500 litre batch, we're just going to pop in like that. It's not even an egg cup full, can you see in the bottom of there? It's practically, practically nothing. And uh, we're just going to mix this up with quite a, quite, a, quite a lot of water actually. Let's bring it over here. We're going to mix this up with a fair bit of water. You have to stir it. It's a little bit like PVA gluing consistency, so to get it into solution you have to agitate it quite readily. And that little bit of concentrate has given me a litre, about a litre of antifoam there. So we'll go and add that to the boil kettle just prior to adding the hops and that'll keep the foam down. So you'll be able to hear the condensate flue is doing its job. There's no steam coming out of the kettle. It's all being condensated or condensed through there. So let's have a look where we are. I've just turned the elements down slightly to prevent a boil over. Sometimes when you open the kettle, with an inrush of cold air, because there is a vacuum there from this piece of kit, the inrush can cause a little bit of uh, a jump out. Can let the work can jump out a little bit unexpectedly. So we're going to add our anti-foam. That's nicely in there, doing its job. And now, there we go, look, you see the boil. Now we're going to add the 880 grams of Challenger. Smells wonderful. So I'm confident enough to put all those in in one hit because I've added the anti-foam and I've turned the heat down. If I had not done either of those things, those hops would now be all over the floor. And yes, it's happened to me loads of times. And there we go, look, the pellets are now breaking down. so much easier using pellet than it is using leaf hop provided you've got the right filtration system and a whirlpool and it's so much easier to store the hops as well than storing leaf hops they're about a quarter of the volume oh, I think we've got most of that mixed in The beer's looking happy. We're going to seal it back up and we're going to set the timer for 50 minutes. Then for the final 10, we'll add some um, protoflock tablet and then we'll be ready to knock it out into the fermenter. Right, the boil is complete. Uh, all the beer's going through the, uh, the plate chiller into this fermenter over here and uh, we're halfway through the transfer as you can see and it's behaved itself only once or twice did it leap out of the boil kettle which isn't bad so we just have to wait for this transfer to finish and then we're going to drop some lovely little yeasties in there to get the fermentation going transfer complete folks we're taking a gravity reading i'm actually just a touch low on this one but uh, no bother. I think what happened was uh, a lot of the uh, starch was left behind in some of the flake barley. Never mind, we'll just adjust the recipe next time to give us a little bit more yield. So if I just pop you on here, you'll see me sprinkling in the, uh, the yeast onto the beer. So this scout goes off mad sometimes like a rocket with this stuff this uh, Nottingham Ale there we go we're in there we go look at that beautiful so in the background you can hear the caustic being recirculated around the boil kettle 
what I'm going to do with that is set a timer on the control panel and the control panel will turn off after three hours and it will recirculate that caustic around for three hours while I'm sat at home and then all I have to do tomorrow is rinse it out and it will be spotless ready for next week so we just put it to bed ready for next week's brew day so that's it folks it's time for me to shut her down and uh, one quick swish down of the floor to clean the floor and we will be all done and dusted ready for home so don't forget so don't forget you can go across to the patreon page where you're going to find this recipe as a pdf i did say i was going to share it as a beersmith file unfortunately um i can't share it on the patreon platform because of the file type and I can't share it on my WordPress site either, harrisonsbrewery.com. So I'm thinking about in the shop section of the brewery uh, website. There, that isn't ready yet, nowhere near ready, I haven't even started on it. Um, I can do downloadable files on there, so we may in the future pop it on there. But, you know, it's a kind of watch this space situation. As far as today goes, thanks for tuning in, hit the like, hit the sub, all that good stuff, and we will see you on tomorrow's vlog. Oh yes, we will.